Have you ever wondered where the television signal you are watching is coming from? Have you ever wondered where the television signal you are watching is coming from? Well, today, we'll not only find out where it's coming from, but how a TV program is put together, how information about that program gets to you, and how your public television station works. Many of the programs on the public television stations in Maine are not produced here. Most of these programs arrive here by satellite. Electronic signals are transmitted from special antennas aimed directly at the satellite. There, high in the sky, the signal is amplified and rebroadcast down to the Earth. Satellite programming can either be broadcast immediately or be stored on videotape for later playback. This public television station has four videotape machines, like this one, which can record and playback taped programs. The tape they use is a lot like the audio tape you might have on your home tape recorders. But this videotape is two inches wide. The larger size allows a better recording of both sound and picture. An audio tape recorder only records your voice. Satellite transmission is not the only way the network can receive videotaped programs. These tapes also come by mail. The programs are broadcast then sent on their way to another station to be used. While the tapes are here, they are stored in this videotape room. Each one of these boxes contain a program, which can be used for broadcast. When the program is about to be aired, the tape is mounted on one of these machines by the broadcast correlator. The machine is adjusted so that it will transmit the best picture and sound. Then control of the videotape machine is switched to the correlator's control panel. The complete on-air broadcast function is run from the correlator's control panel. He can control two slide projectors, two film projectors, the four videotape machines, and several audio cartridge tape machines from this position. He can also choose from three different live sources of programming, either the satellite system, the microwave ground link, or live studio production. The microwave ground link is something like the satellite system in that the electronic signals which carry the television picture and sound go from one transmission point to the other through the air. But since these signals must be transmitted in a straight line, and since the microwave stations are on the ground instead of up in space, there must be a number of ground stations used to bend the signal around the Earth. The correlator makes his program choice by following the schedule sheets provided by the station's programming department. The programming department lists the program to be shown, the time it is to be shown, and where it will come from, the satellite, videotape, or the network studios. The department also makes any changes in the programming they feel will benefit the station's viewers. This schedule is also the official record of what the station broadcasts and must show the time that the program starts. If these times change, they must be noted by the correlator. The broadcast signal travels from the video source through the master control console to the television transmission tower. From there, the signal is transmitted to our homes and our schools. Doing the job of relaying programs from the public broadcasting service is only one part of the work done at the station. Local television programming is produced here at this studio. This field trip series is one such program. Let's look at the people who work to put such shows together. The idea for a program can come from anywhere. It is the importance of that idea to the station's viewers that will determine whether the idea becomes a topic for a program. If the administration of the station accepts the idea as a topic, it will be given to a producer for development. 
the producer's job is to figure out an approach to the topic which will be interesting to the viewer and be good programming for the station. To do this, he may consult with experts in the field to be discussed, read about the topic, or view other programs on the topic or areas which surround it. Very soon, the producer will begin to develop a script. The script is a plan or an outline of what is to be photographed and said on the program. It contains two columns, one for video and one for audio. If the producer needs help in writing the script, he will use a script writer. The script writer will use many of the same sources for information gathering as the producer, but the writer will have to dig deeper into the topic to gather enough background to write a good script. The producer and the script writer will meet periodically to discuss the script and decide if any changes are to be made. When everyone is happy with the script, it is accepted and production will begin. The program's producer will now begin to make up a schedule for production. He will arrange for studio time, schedule equipment with the production manager, hire actors or a narrator, and arrange for the promotion, which will be used to tell the public about the program. To do this, the producer will speak with the promotion director. The producer will also ask for a set to be built. The design of the set is developed during discussions between the chief graphics designer, the production crew chief, and the producer. If a director has been assigned to the program, he will also be in attendance. The aim of their discussion is to come up with a design which the station can build, a set that will look good on camera and fit the script. Once a design is accepted, the production crew chief and his staff go about constructing the set in the network's carpentry shop. While the set is being constructed, the graphics center is busy doing the artwork for the program and its promotion. The graphics shop is under the supervision of the chief graphics artist. The artists here make titles, pictures, and graphics to be used on the program. This department also designs the advertising to be used in the newspapers and television guide. It's said that they can make anything out of anything. This used to be a regular kickball. It was painted into a little globe of the earth, and this is what it looked like when it was used in a program last year. When construction is complete, the set pieces are brought to one of the station's studios to be erected. Here it will be checked against the artist's drawing for corrections. Studio lighting is very important in television. If the lighting is wrong, then the viewer will not be able to see what is happening. This grid, which is about 15 feet above the studio floor, holds the lights. The piece of equipment which picks up this picture so we can see it is the television camera. This is a studio camera, and it is handled by a studio camera person. It has special equipment to help it do its job. Its zoom lens allows it to take close-ups or wide shots without moving. If it is decided that the camera must be repositioned to get a better angle on the set, it may be moved forward or backward, or to the left or right, using the wheels on the camera stand, called a pedestal. These movements have special names. Moving forward and backward is called dollying. Moving to the left and to the right is called trucking. The camera pedestal can perform one more important task. It can pedestal up or down. These movements allow the camera to get a different look at what it is shooting. Now the pictures are sent to the production control booth where the director sits. This is the director's console. Here all the sources of video are available to the director to use as he wishes. The videotape machines, the film slide chains, as well as the studio cameras can be used to complete a production. Sound for the production comes from the studio through the microphones which the talent wears to this audio control board. When the video and audio signals leave the production control room, they may go to the video correlators control room to be put right out on the air. Or the signal might go to one of the video tape machines to be recorded for broadcast at a later date. Your public broadcasting network can also produce programming outside its studios. The network uses its mobile van to carry its remote units all over Maine to record material. In fact, 
field trip is produced on the road. A remote production crew takes its portable equipment, which includes lights as well as cameras, right to the location of a story. Most of the equipment runs on batteries, so the crew can set up just about anywhere.